If you were a player today, what would you be thinking? And, and secondary question, you have sons. If your sons were playing right now, mm -hmm. what would you be thinking? If, I, if my sons were in college football right now, I'd be scared to death for them not to have a college football season because I know what it's like to be a player in college, to be that age and have a ton of idle time and have a ton of, okay, what, what can I do? You know, where, where can I get myself into trouble? Here's the reality, and people need to understand this. When you are a player, everything is scheduled off of football, right? You have your football schedule, and then your academic schedule will bounce off of that. And everything revolves around the football time frame. And there's a lot of time committed to football, both that is allowed and that you do on your own. And so if you don't have a college football season, let's assume that some of these kids will go to school from 8 a.m. to noon. If they don't have a season, they're going to have – eight to 10 hours a day on their own of them doing whatever they want. And I would be scared to death for my son to not have that structure because they don't understand what self-discipline is just yet and time management is just yet and the, the ability to make the correct decisions all the time when they have all that window of opportunity to do so. So if I was a player, I would want to play. And if I had sons in college football right now, I would be more fearful of them not having a season in that structure than playing. Hey, it is also worth pointing out there are some university campuses that will be open to regular students. Let's use that phrase, the non-athletes. But there are many that are not, where everything will be online. So if the student athletes are not there to play their sports, then they will not be on campus at all. Booger McFarlane, you played at LSU. You worked at the SEC Network. You know this stuff backwards and forwards. What are your thoughts this morning? Well, Greeny, I, I've said for months that the, the only reason we're having a college football season, NFL season, or any season is because of the economic impact that it would have on everybody. And to Dan's point, if this is truly about safety, if this, if this is truly about taking care of the players, then we're not going to play because the presidents, the ADs, everyone has to say, what's the one way that we can pretty much guarantee, guarantee that we won't have a mass outbreak on a football team or we won't have these long-term effects right now? It's to not have anybody play football, but the fact that, there will, that, that we're still sitting here going back and forth, the fact that the heart condition came out and everybody was like, whoa, what's going on here? It's from a liability standpoint. No university, no AD, no president wants to be liable for a long-term effect when it comes to these kids, and I get it. I understand the season is on life support, but if you're really going to do the right thing by these kids, if you're really going to do what's right, then I think they're either going to postpone it or cancel football. Now, to the point that you asked Dan Greeny about, what if you had a son? Mm -hmm. I'll answer that, and, 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 and I'll take it to another level. I have a son. If he was old enough to play college football and if he was on a team, I wouldn't let him play because here's the thing that I would ask, and here's the statement I've been saying for months. How can it be safe for me to send my 17 to 20-year-old son on the field, but you can't have fans in the stands? How can it be safe for me to send my 17 to 20-year-old kid to college, but you can't have kids that go to class and sit in these seats? See, at some point, this has become selfish for everyone else, and we want to make decisions when we're not the one that's taking all the risk. The kids are the one that's taking the risk, and unfortunately for the NCAA and for college football and for college athletics, we still call these kids amateur athletes and we we've hid behind that for years well guess what that's kind of biting us in the rear end now because you have amateur athletes that can't make these decisions i understand what trevor lawrence and all these people around the, the country are doing we want to play well guess what it's not up to you because you're an amateur what does that mean that means somebody's got to make this decision for you this is not professional football where you're dealing with grown men. This is not the professional ranks where you're getting paid millions of dollars and you can make that decision on your own. These are amateur athletes and somebody's got to make that decision. So I understand we want to play. I understand the hashtag. That doesn't really mean anything because you can't make the decision for yourself. And if it was my son, Greeny, we're not playing because if we can't have fans in the stands, if we can't go to class, if we can't be a regular student, then why in the hell are we playing football? I'll tell you why, Greeny. We're playing because the fans, the people that work around college football, the people that work in this industry, we are selfish because economically it impacts 
us. And that's the only reason we're still trying to get this season off the ground. It's extraordinarily well said, and it's very hard to argue with. Again, so we will hear from all those players coming up. As you can see, we have so much perspective here this morning. I want to bring Shefty in on this now. Adam Schefter, of course, our NFL insider, because many will look at this and wonder what impact does all of this have on the National Football League and what reaction are they having as they see this? Shefty, what, what's the answer to those questions? Greeny, the NFL, I think, is just sitting back, watching and observing events to see how they unfold. And, of course, if college football does go away, and you heard all the chatter from all our analysts right there, there would be a window of opportunity for the NFL to adjust its schedule, and it could move games to Saturday nights. There might be networks that would want programming on Friday nights because of the lack of content that they currently have at this point in time. So everything would be wide open. The sports world essentially would stop in October. You have hockey coming to an end in early October, basketball mid-October, baseball late October as it's currently scheduled. You have the presidential election. And so once you get past those sports and the presidential election, there will be a window of time of about two months where there would be nothing else on the sports calendar if college football went away but the NFL. There are no fans in the stadiums. There are no plans for hotels for fans traveling from other cities to have to reserve hotels. The NFL very simply could just move games to Saturday night, to Friday night, to Saturday afternoon, to whenever they wanted to completely control the sports calendar, which they would do anyway. But they might want to do it with prime time programming over multiple nights during the week. And so the NFL doesn't have to do anything right now but sit back and watch this all unfold. But I believe the real possibility exists that the NFL could shift its schedule around, move games into prime times in other slots, and it'll see now how college football handles this. That is so fascinating to think about, and it feels like a very real possibility. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.